All right, friends, I'm here in studio. We're going to talk about light. We have to define what it is that we're talking about. So what are our light sources? There's several that, we're going to do, that I'm going to describe. Number one is natural light. Natural light is exactly what you see right now. It's not using anything that's artificial like this guy up here. It's just pure natural light. The second is what we consider artificial light, and that is this right here. It's my softbox. It's, an, it's a light source that is anything other than natural light. And the third is what I like to call a combination of both. And I don't have a fancy word for it, but it's using natural light and artificial light together. Now, I've done that on several pictures that I've posted, especially of high school seniors out on the salt flats, and there's a sunset and I'm lighting the senior and their horse artificially while bringing in the sunset. That's probably one of, the, one of my most favorite things to do, especially with high school seniors. Now that we've described what those three light sources are, again, natural, artificial, and a combination of both, now we talk about directional light. Directional light is uh, what we would consider front light, side light, backlight, top light, and even bottom light. And that is the light source relative to your subject. So right now, we would consider this side light. In terms of light pattern, that would mean it is a split light. This half of my face is lit, and this half is not. If I were to turn around, because this, this will be funny, right? If I were to turn around like this, and if I were photographing myself this way, the main light source is coming at me from behind. We would call that backlight. Turning myself around on the horse again this way, if I'm photographing myself this way, we would consider this front light. So the, your whole subject is front lit. The other, the other light sources, or not light sources, the other directional light that we have is what we call top light and bottom light. That top light, think of a branding, think one o'clock in the afternoon, undiffused light, sun is high up overhead, coming down directly onto our subject. It's usually that light that we stay away from. And lastly, bottom light. Think of Dracula in bottom light. So the light source is coming from bottom to top and usually creates a really dramatic scene. Um, commonly known, we, we call it Dracula light or horror lighting, something like, not horror, but horror lighting, um, that creates somewhat of an unflattering light pattern, especially if we're doing just a portrait of a person. Those are, the, those are the main areas of light that I want you to know about. You can, I'll put this on YouTube, you can go back and you can listen to this over and over until you get it. What we do with artificial light is really mimic what we already do with natural light, and that is identifying these light patterns, these, these directional light sources, and putting our subjects in them for the most flattering, um, directional light possible. So when I talk about light patterns, what I'm, what I'm talking about is this. Right now, like I said, we have split light coming in. This side of my face is lit and this side is not. Split light is just that. One half of the face is lit, the other is not. If I were to turn my chin into the light just a little bit more like this, we would consider this short light, meaning this narrow band of my face is lit while the shadow side is not, but the shadow side is presented to the camera. We consider that short light. If I turn my face this way, this whole side of my face is lit, and we consider that broad light. Broad light tends to emphasize our subject. Now, in over 12 years of photographing people, I've never had one person say, hey, please make me bigger than possible. <laughs> with lighting, lighting tends to emphasize our subjects. It can emphasize it in a broad way or in a short way, something that's more narrow because our eyes are drawn to the, the brightest part of the image first. And in this case, the brightest part of the image is this narrow band of light coming down my face, giving the illusion of something that's slimmer, 
Although with my beard, I don't want something slimmer. I want something that emphasizes its uh, volume, if you will. Okay, just kidding. Those are the main areas of light that I want you to know about. Also know that you can go out, you can create this directional light no matter where you're at. If you have a horse trailer, if you have a garage, if you have a barn, if you have one single, one single window, you know, that you can get that light through, you're in a great place. And that first, you know, the first area or the, the first step in that is recognizing where you see directional light and then moving the person within that light. Now let's demonstrate some lighting. I'm going to use myself as a test subject. What I've done is I set up my camera uh, on timer. So here we go. Let's start with this portrait right here. I'm going to look just into just over here. So I have this short light position on my face and I'll keep my eyes just gazing over here. So they're non-confrontational. In other words, I'm not looking into the camera. Let's go. Okay, that was natural light. The exposure settings that I'm using are 1 8, 1 <laughs> ISO 800, 1 50th of a second at aperture of f4. Let's take another one, this time with the hat down. Oh, got to get that. Th there it is. Okay, let's take a look at those. I'll put them up on screen. Okay, now I'm going to use artificial light to create another image. And instead of natural light, it's going to completely cancel it out. So I have to change my exposure settings. With artificial light, what I have to do is, since I'm in control of the power, I'm going to go down to ISO 100 F4 at 1 200th of a second. With the light facing me this way, I'll be in almost a split light position. Let's go ahead and take this and see what happens. With artificial light, you get to be in control of everything and you get to create the light. Now, as we, as we look at that picture, you know, it fine, I have light on me, but it's, I don't necessarily like it. It's not creative enough for me. So, what I'm looking for is just more of a narrow beam of light. And to do that, what I'll need to do is switch my light modifier. A light modifier is something that goes in front of your light that narrows the beam of light. So if I were to take this softbox, which is a light modifier, off of my flash, there's nowhere for, well, my light will go everywhere if I flash it. Now that's not going to create a great light pattern or anything or narrow beam of light on my face at all. And that's what we want to do. So let's change this and put on a narrower beam of light and see what happens. All right. Now that I've changed the light modifier, the, the light is no longer going out like this. It's more in a narrow beam of light. And what I'm looking for is just to highlight this part of my face. I'm going to turn my, face into the light and just create more of a dramatic portrait. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Here we go. Now that's more like it, right? That is starting to feel more like the vision that I had in my head. I want a darker, moodier portrait, something that is along the lines of low key or a darker styled image. That's what speaks to me. It may not be what speaks to you, but these are the images that I tend to go for quite often. So what we've learned today, as far as lighting 101 is we talked about light sources being natural, artificial, and a combination of both. And from there we start creating what we call directional light. And that can be classified as side light, top light, bottom light. We can even go backlight or front light. And in addition to those, once we have our subject in those, in that directional light, then we can start moving them around into specific lighting patterns like split light, loop light, butterfly light, stuff like that. And finally, we talked about 
quality of light and quantity of light. Quantity of light being the measurement, something that we can measure in terms of the intensity of light that's falling on my face. Finally, ending with what we call quality of light, and that is what we typically refer to as um, times of day like 7 to 9 o'clock in the morning and 7 to 9 o'clock in the evening when the sun is low on the horizons it creates that really beautiful soft light golden light that comes in you know because well because of pollution or dust or whatever um, the sun comes through there creates those dramatic images that we like to see backlit when when I think about something that really strikes me in lighting, I think about backlight. And that's because when it rains, when it snows, when there's dust, uh, mist coming off of a waterfall, some of the things that I think about immediately are, how can I backlight that? Because it emphasizes the dust, it emphasizes the snow and also the rain. In fact, I made, back in January, I made a YouTube video uh, backlighting my wife Joe and the dogs as they came walking up in a snowstorm. You'll want to take a look at that. Let's get back to Tutorial Tuesday questions.